Take the fight to them! Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys. Celtic Orband here, and welcome to the Battle of Hastings, which was fought in 1066 between Harold Godwinson of Wessex and William of Normandy. And you can see we've got a pretty historical looking battlefield here. I was actually surprised that Thrones of Britannia had a battlefield that matched Hastings so closely. Uh, you can see that they are formed up while the English units are formed up on this massive hillside here. And uh, historically it was backed on either flank by a very thick forest. Now, granted, they should be thicker than this, uh, but just the fact that they have forest on either side of this hilltop was quite cool. And uh, from the back as well, it was covered in forest, so it was really completely covered on the flanks, which is, really plays into Harold Godwinson's style of warfare, which was just to form a very strong melee shield wall and then break anything that, or hold against anything that tried to break it. Now, looking at William Godwinson's, or sorry, Harold Godwinson's army, who I'm mixing the two guys together already, uh, here is Harold Godwinson there. And he actually fought on the front lines with his men. He didn't hold back to survey the battlefield. He was right in the first line. So uh, he's in the center. And then, of course, he's got his most elite infantry, his uh, house carls and his royal thanes, uh, making the front core of his army. So the very center, the core, was the strongest. And on the flanks, he had uh, most of his feared units. And now what a feared is... Is is what the it was the way that England in those days was able to draw armies up. So it was basically kind of like um, the Minutemen that you would have heard in Independence Day. So a king can g call up a feared, and I think the ratio was one in five landowners had to partake of it, and they could be on campaign for up to two months unless there was an emergency. Then they would be held for longer. But, so I've represented the more cheaper feared units on either flanks, which was historically accurate. So he's got a lot of these feared spearmen in the front lines, followed by these uh, Cyril Axemen. So there's 12 units on this flank, and then there is 12 units on the other flank as well of the cheaper infantry. So, as I said, the core of Harold Godwinson's army was his elite infantry, his swords, his spears, well, his swords and his axes. And then on either flanks was his uh, cheap militia type units. He also did have a few archer units, so I have represented that with four units of the feared archers. But looking over at Harold Godwinson's, or sorry, looking over at William the Conqueror's force, uh, who is commanding Norway, a much more elite army. So Harold Godwinson of England, or Wessex, he had about 5,000 men under his command, but about 3,000 of that was uh, his cheap militia units. Consequently, over here, this Norman army was very professional, and it also numbered 7,000 men. But the army composition was much different. Harold Godwinson of England mostly relied, like I said, on heavy melee infantry. So he didn't really have any archers, and he didn't have any cav whatsoever. But William the Conqueror brought a much more balanced build. Um, half of his army of the 7,000, so about 3,500 men, uh, were these heavy main infantry and Norman knights. You can see the Norman knights over here in the second line with their iconic kite shields. Uh, they all traditionally had the male, uh, the male tunic on, uh, which went down to about the knees, and then they carried the kite shields and either a sword or an axe. And 25% of his army was archers, so we've got a good host of Norman archers here on the battlefield. And the final 25% or quarter of his force was cavalry, so it was a very well-balanced army. And one that was very professional and much more professional than William Godwinson's feared units. However, that uh, melee line in the front that is kind of making the core of the army, those are the the uh, survivors of Stamford Bridge. So um, they are a force to be reckoned with. They were able to defeat the Viking invaders and come out of it with their lives. So uh, they've seen battle, they've seen blood, and uh, now they're about to see a lot more. So we can go ahead and put this on play here. It's not a very long battle, but historically the battle started at 9 a.m. and it actually lasted until dusk. So well over 12 hours. It was just basically a big meat grinder as the Normans sent wave after wave up the slopes here to attack 
the uh, Wessex position, but it looks like we've got uh, King William here, or, well, he's not king yet, but we've got William of Normandy moving forwards to challenge Harold Godwinson, and I love this mechanic from Thrones of Britannia, this, this outward cry this battle rhythm that they've got going on here. All the units cheering as they as the uh, enemy cavalry comes closer. So the, the Normans here, the Norman general is um, probably, you know, offering terms to the English general here. So maybe uh, asking if he'll surrender, but there we go. I think that is a strong enough statement. His whole line forming a skilled wall. Oh, very nice, very cool looking, and there we go. I think William the Conqueror has realized that he is going to have to kill every last Englishman on this hilltop before he can move on to his conquest of England, basically. But you can see that now the chanting has stopped mostly. It's very quiet. So they're, I'm probably, I'm sure they're probably just holding their breath to see what the Nor Normans are going to do. But here we go. We've got the first wave moving forwards. Looks like we've got some main infantry here mixed in with some Norman knights. So tier 3 infantry and very elite. And they're going to be pushing up the slopes to battle. Let's, uh, let's actually see which unit we can follow up. Let's follow this unit up the slopes here. So you can kind of get it from the Norman perspective what they'd be looking at. To be honest, I, I don't know which flank I would rather be on. Charging head-on, there was less men up at the top of the slopes, but they were the elite uh, house carls. Uh, then again, to move over onto the flanks, yeah, it's just it's ill-equipped and ill-trained feared units. However, there is, you know, 1,500 of them on that one flank, and then another uh, 1,500 or so on the other flanks. So there's only about 1,000 in the center here. But there we go, so the Normans have moved up their archers to try and soften up the skilled wall, or the shield wall, but they realize right away that the shield wall holds very firm in the face of archer fire. And there we go, we've got some returning archer fire here from the well-placed uh, English bowmen. And there we go, we've got our first clash. And we can see a couple of the units, um, couple of the units being cut down right away as the shield wall kind of breaks and a couple of the units do move forwards to engage but the main battle line has formed oh my goodness that is a lot of archer fire over there yeah these these archer units are not the best these spirit archers again they're just militia they're mostly farmers uh, that also double as bowmen I guess in wartime uh, but against the tier 2 Norman archers uh, the archers that are probably trained for the position that they are now in uh, it's it's really no contest a lot of them being shot down which is too bad a lot of people who are not going to uh, till their fields this guy actually has two arrows in his arm and look he's still gonna fire well done well done there but yeah mostly that's my archers that are routing there And there is the general there, the bodyguard. That is Harold Godwinson from among his shield wall. He's inspiring his men to hold all day if they must. Just look at this battle line, though. If we take a look onto the flanks, the feared units, as I said, are also in... Uh, in a shield wall, or a shield castle as they call it in this game. The tier 3 infantry uh, would do pretty well against them, but it's just the overwhelming numbers because you can see I, I push forwards the Cyril Axemen as well to help give them the edge. Yeah, but most of, most of my archers are breaking. You can see a lot of them are wavering. However, I started to focus down uh, one archer unit at a time with my two healthy units, and I did manage to uh, route this Norman archer unit, but it has returned to the battlefield, unfortunately. Oh, and the arrow fire, it's just relentless. And that's not even all of the archers of the Normans. You can see that they've got four more units over here. 
waiting for the second wave, and they've got a lot of elite infantry. They've actually got two more waves that they could send forwards, and of course all of their cavalry as well. Just look at this, this battle. So it looks like my feared units have come out of that shield castle, but as soon as they push the infantry back, they are able to form it once again. But unfortunately, the ones that are on the opposite end of that shield wall uh, will get cut down. You can see this guy is kind of trapped on the other side of the shield wall. There he goes. He's dead, unfortunately. That's too bad. But we're starting to push them back, which is good. The Normans, the Norman Knights here are starting to take quite a few casualties. Uh, also, due to the fact that I'm starting to push out and flank around with my uh, elite, my Royal Huskarls here. However, that's given the Norman archers the backs of these very elite infantry to start to fire down onto them. You can see over here a couple of them, yep, a couple of them getting shot in the back. And they already don't have a very good missile block due to the fact that they have no shields. Yeah, there we go. And there we go. It looks like we're starting to uh, have some wavering. I thought I heard some some units that were fleeing. Uh, might just be the archers at this point. But there we go. Look at this. We've got the Norman foot soldiers starting to waver over here. And how about on the other flank as well? Yeah, it looks like uh, it's a general retreat here. So historically what happened on, on the battlefield at this point is the Normans actually retreated from the hilltop this first wave. And historians debate whether this was a planned retreat, like a feigned retreat, or if it was a legitimate one. However, it was catastrophic for Harold Godwinson. His main corps of infantry held because they are trained and they're well uh, ordered. But unfortunately, the feared units that were seeing that they were gaining the upper hand here actually charged down the hilltops chasing the units that were retreating you can see over here as well we've got massive amounts of militia units trying to run down those normans and that's when the norman knights realize that they are able to hit them from the sides because the feared spearmen and the serial axemen do not have the cover of the forest once they've come off the hilltop and this just becomes a complete slaughter for the English. And all Harold Godwinson can do is watch from the hilltop as about 70% of his force is annihilated. You can see over here as well the Norman archers firing down. We've got more of the cavalry with their lances just knocking my men down to the ground and then obviously trampling them underfoot. Uh, he's got to be careful though. He's getting a little bit of friendly fire. For the Norman archers, that is. Yeah, over here you can see my men starting to flee up the slopes. Trying to escape. Oh, it looks like one of them has sank to his knees. The Normans have killed him there. But look at all of these men that are starting to retreat. So a huge, huge mistake there. And like I said, all Harold Godwinson can do up there is hold his ground because if he charges down the slope to reinforce his units, he's lost his advantage because he already doesn't have the the numbers to overpower the Normans and he also doesn't have the, the professional trained soldiers to overpower them either. So he re was really relying on his uh, hill advantage, but that has just about gone now. Now a couple of the units are starting to uh, return. You can see they're still wavering, but they are starting to rally as they come closer to the general. And I am going to try and pull those units over to form back my lines. But as the Norman the Norman units get closer, some of the units start to shatter here. You can see this Cyril Axman unit and this Spear and Spearman unit shattering. But of the 3,500 men that charge down the slope, I'm probably getting about 300 of them back. So just just utter disaster for Harold Godwinson and his army at this point. 
And yeah, you can see we've got the Norman Knights over here just charging down the slope, no mercy, into uh, my feared Spearman here. And now the balance of power heavily against us. It was already not with us from the beginning, but now, now it's looking pretty grim. But in the face of disaster, these heavily, uh, these Royal Fanes here, these heavily armored units, are uh, still holding. They are not going to abandon their king. They're going to hold on this hilltop and wait to see what the Normans do next. But I'd imagine it's going to be a full assault at this point. And yep, looks like the the ones that had retreated are beginning the ascent of the hill once again. But we've got this second wave that's coming forwards as well. And it's all Norman foot soldiers, tier 3, very heavily armored units. And William the Conqueror there. There he is. He's feeling pretty good at this point in the battle. He he realizes that that mistake is, is going to be very hard to overcome for Harold Godwinson. And he's going to uh, just make sure that he's able to overpower the elite infantry at the top of the slope. So he's moving forwards his third line as well. So yeah, it is, it is just an all-out assault at this point. More archers coming forwards as well to soften up that shield wall. And here we go. I've got a few of my units over here that are forming up, but as soon as I get them formed up and then the Norman warriors get close, uh, they break, which was which was pretty annoying because I was trying to have some semblance of a battle line. But look at all these units that are starting to uh, waver as the Norman foot soldiers come into view once again. But if you just watched, you know, over half your unit or more than half of your army get slaughtered by the Normans and then you were told to sit there and face them again. I don't know if I would be that brave. But I've also got three units over here that returned as well. However, they are engaging the uh, Norman foot soldiers over here, and I can't imagine that they're going to hold that long. You can see that they're already wavering, and they just got into melee. And now we've got an all-out brawl for the hilltop. The last of my archers were retreating over the hilltop as well. Englishmen. Luckily, my Royal Huskarls are still here as well, and they are a force to be reckoned with. They do some major damage. And there is the general. There is Harold Godwinson himself. Uh, his unit all has kite shields, but he has the round shield in the center. Let's see if he can get some kills. It looks like he's pulling back uh, into his unit. Yeah, it looks like he's not going to get any kills as of yet. Oh, hold on. I'm hearing some footsteps. This must be the third line of Norman warriors coming in. Oh my goodness, that is so loud. Yeah, there we go. Just the whole battle line brought in. And now, to add insult to injury, we've got the the Norman archers firing down onto the units that are not part of the shield wall. But over here, my Seeks warriors as well are starting to get outflanked because the feared units have broken. So that's not good for them, but unfortunately I can't break the shield wall because I need them to hold against the units in the front. But there we go, another really nice charge into the backs of these Sikhs warriors on this flank. I'm sure a lot of them are going to start getting cut down. Yep. And there we go, some more units coming into the backs. Of my uh, Earl Stains, I think, there, and my Royal Huskarls now having to fight on both sides, or uh, front and back. How are my Huskarls doing? They should still be getting a decent amount of kills. And then 
let's see if we can see the general in the mix of this as well. Again, we just have to look for the round shield. Where is he? Oh, there he is. Uh, he's surrounded by his men, so obviously his men are trying to keep him alive. They don't want him right in the front lines because they do see that a lot of Englishmen are dying up there. But yeah, now the pretty much the entire force has been engaged. And look at that, we've even got William of Normandy pushing in to face the uh, royal bodyguard, Harold Godwinson as well. But looks like my Seeks warriors have broken over on this side. My Thanes are next, followed by my Earl Thanes and my Huskarls probably to break. But the center is still not outflanked, which is good. So my Royal Thanes here and my uh, General have a, have a fighting chance at least. But that balance of power is very far against us. Over here as well, I was really impressed with these Seeks Warriors and the Thanes Tier 1 units here. And uh, they are holding while being completely surrounded. And I do have some men that are rallying and I'm trying to send back in. We've got some Seeks Warriors coming over here. The Normans peeling off a unit to deal with them and just slaughter them. Should have ran while you had the chance, boys. Now you can see that my Royal Thanes are starting to be outflanked as well. But the General is still holding. Where is he gone? Surely he isn't dead yet. Where are you, Harold Godwinson? Uh, historically, Harold Godwinson actually didn't die right on the front lines. There he is. He's actually at the back. Um, what actually happened to him is the Norman archers were commanded to fire up and over the shield wall to get the units that were not part of it behind. And Harold Godwinson actually received uh, an arrow to the eye and was knocked to the ground. And after that happened, a couple of Norman... Uh, knights broke through the bodyguard and actually hacked him to pieces. So it was a very grisly demise for the uh, the King of England. But that's a bad sign. We've got the Royal Huskarls breaking there, so it looks like the battle is almost over. And I'm just basically watching the general over here fighting for his life. But pretty much as soon as he dies, the battle is over. So I really hope you guys did enjoy this historical battle. And I've definitely got more historical battles on the channel for you guys to check out if you are so interested. And if you have any other ideas, uh, be sure to leave it down in the comments below. So make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, yeah, hopefully you will uh, stay tuned for more epic battles to come. So without further ado, guys, I will see you in the next one.